Hello everybody, this is Nicholas Rogers and I'm going to do a quick tabletop review on this Glock 43X and why I chose it as a conceal and carry pistol. This Glock 43X will be replacing my Walther PPS right here as my motorcycle vest conceal and carry pistol. My everyday carry is a HK VP9 SK but this is a little bit too big to fit inside of my motorcycle vest, especially with a light on the rail. The Walther PPS was a great gun, but I received a letter in the mail saying that this run of PPS is potential to have a defect where if there is a round in the chamber and the pistol is dropped or hit hard, it potentially could discharge on accident. And as a motorcyclist, I do not want to take the chance of being in an accident and going down on my right side where I carry the pistol and the pistol potentially accidentally discharging and shooting myself or somebody else. Back to the Glock 43X. I chose this, this firearm because one, I got to try out the triggers and feel of a lot of different manufacturers at the gun stores that I visited. And I felt like the Glock 43X fit my hand very well. And even with it being a subcompact pistol, I still can get my pinky some real estate on the bottom of the pistol grip. Another thing that I liked about this particular 43X is the actual trigger. So some of the 43Xs that I felt, the triggers kind of felt like mush. Not a really big fan of them. This one I really enjoyed because it has no hump in, in the pull on the, on the way back to the wall. It's just extremely smooth and then once you get to the wall it's very little creep and then it just breaks and then the reset is standard reset back to a fast action on that follow-up shot and also with this model of glock i felt like i have really good point of aim so just practicing pulling the firearm up like with my eyes closed and then opening my eyes and looking down the sights, I'm pretty much lined up. So I have good point of aim with this pistol. Now, some people don't like the point of aim on the Glock. Some people do. It's going to depend on your hand and then also just your, you know, hand-eye coordination. So the pistol does come with two 10-round polymer magazines. These are going to go bye-bye. Not a big fan of these, especially now that I know there are shield arms that makes a metal version of this magazine that's the exact same size that holds 15 rounds and is flush fit in the bottom of the pistol. So it's not like I'm going to have an extension sticking out the bottom. It is still going to be the same size. So as far as concealability goes, I'm adding five rounds for the exact same amount of real estate that this pistol will take up. Very excited for that. Now, because it is a metal magazine, I will have to be swapping out the polymer mag release button to a metal because you don't want to have a metal magazine up against polymer because metal will chew up the polymer. Vice versa. You don't want to have a metal mag release and then have polymer magazines going in because that mag release will chew up the actual polymer mags. Uh, on top of that, I will be putting a metal mag well down at the bottom of the pistol, just because if I'm putting metal magazines into a polymer gun, I don't want to accidentally hit and chew up the bottom of the polymer. Uh, aside from that, not going to do any work to the trigger. Love this trigger the way that it is. I haven't shot it yet, so we will actually see once I shoot the pistol. I will be putting some Talon rubberized gripping on this because, let's be honest, the stippling on this pistol is minimal. And if I'm in a time of need, I don't want to be worried that this pistol is getting out of my hand. Uh, especially if I'm shooting, if I don't have a great grip and I have to take like an off camber shot or something like that, I want to make sure that I have good grip on this positive, positive grip. Other thing I will be doing too is the serrations up here on the slide are not that great. Now I have the same thing done on my HEK that I will be doing to this Glock. So I have some slide grip tape that I will be putting on this just to ensure if I have a malfunction and I need to be able to rack it, if my hands are sweaty, mom spaghetti, vomit on my sweater, something like that, I will be able to rack it and it's not going to miss. Uh, but yeah, oh, other thing too, really quickly, not a fan of the Glock sights. They look good during the day, they're easy to line up, but I'm a fan of night sights, tritium night sights especially. Seems like most concealed carry 
usage of firearms happens in a dark environment. Typically when people are getting mugged, people don't like to usually mug people in broad daylight, I guess unless you live in D.C. or Los Angeles, um, but or Chicago. But I feel like you need some sort of night sight. And I like tritium just because, for example, with my Walther, it has glow sights, but they have to be charged by a light source. If this is hiding in my motorcycle vest, there's no way for this to be charged. So if I have to pull this out, these night sights really aren't going to work for me. Um, so like on my HK, I have tritium. And the tritium is always glowing. I'm going to be putting night vision three dot lights or three dot tritium sights on here with a red front post sight and then two white in the rear. And it will have tritium glow in the middle of all three of those. Aside from that, this pistol is pretty much perfect for me, I think. We'll find out, though. I'll keep you updated.